Okay, I'm just waiting for you guys to jump on here. We're going to make this really cute card. This is from, the stamp is called Winter Covered Bridge, and it's from Blue Night Rubber Stamps. So there you can see it comes on this really nice backer board. It is a nice cling rubber stamp, as you can see here. The first card I made was this one, and I made a video on this one before. Um, this one, be coloring today's card with Copics. Hopefully that glare is not so bad there. Let's see here. I'm going to wait a minute while you guys hop on here. I see four of you on here. Six of you. Hi, guys. Happy Saturday afternoon. I am. I want to thank everybody for checking up on me. Um, I had my surgery on Wednesday. Everything went fine. So we are good to go. Hello, Tracy. Hello, Wilda. Oh, who's buzzing me already? I got a new phone and I have to learn how to work it. Let me try turn down. Hold on. How are you guys doing this weekend? Narrowing down for Halloween. I hope those of you who requested Halloween cards got them from me. Okay, so I have the image mounted. Um, what we're going to do is stamp it out with Memento ink and... Um, color it in with some Copics. Oops. Technology. All right, I think I got it. Okay, so I have a regular piece of blue cardstock cut down to A2 size, which is um, scored at five and a half by four and a quarter. And then this is a piece of Nina Solar White, which is cut down to... I think this is five by three. No, I think this is five and a quarter by four. Hold on. Let's measure that. No, it is five by three and three quarters. So five by three and three quarters for that piece. And then I'm going to move this image aside. We have our Memento ink here. If the glare is a problem, guys, let me know. I will turn that overhead light off. Let's see if this helps. There we go. Hello, Eileen. So just inking up with Memento. Normally I would probably do this on my stamp plant form, but I'm being lazy today. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it in the center where I want it. It has gotten cold here in the last couple days. I think we're going to have a heavy winter this year, a cold winter. So I, I got so much done in the last two days with cutting the grass, putting away the patio furniture, you know, all that stuff. Taking the canopy down off the deck. I have to take my boat over for storage. There, that came out pretty good. And then nice as this comes on a nice laminated backer board, I just stick that down and that's it. Put it away for storage. Okay, so let's just really quickly color this in. Now, I don't like to color, guys, so I keep my image off to the side for reference. I'm just going to put it over here so I can just look at it and remind myself of the colors. I'm going to start with something easy, quick, and just do the trees. I don't know if you guys, I've, I've, I don't think I can zoom in from this view for you guys. I wish I had zoomed in. But I'm just going to take the screen and just kind of do the trees. And it doesn't have to be perfect. 
I always say that to you guys, just getting it down, getting that color down. And we'll go back in with a white gel pen later and highlight that snow. So that's pretty easy. And then I have a couple of different colors of grays and blues. So this one is, oh, that green was called YG67. It's called Moss. I have BG000 and B00. So let's go down with the, the BG first. I think that's going to be the super light color. We'll just do our little stream here. Looks like it would be a nice trout stream. And actually, I'm going to do the sky part too. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to cover this card up with glitter to make it a snowy scene. And I think Leah and I did this card last year. And then I'm just going to go in with the B00 and touch it up a little. Hello, Mariel. Oh, from Mexico City. I got to visit Mexico once. I fell in love with guacamole in Mexico. I never thought I would like guacamole, but I had fresh guacamole in Mexico, and it was delicious. I would love to be in Mexico City right now with all that warm weather. Hello, Angela. Nice to see you. Okay, so I just did the sky and the water with some blues there. And then for the mountains, I kind of want to do two different colors. And I'm going to be using my cool grays. So the cool grays are the C's. And I have C1, C3, and C5. So I think I'll take the C1 and do, which is the lightest, do this upper mountain here. And just, again, just real quick coloring. Nothing fancy here. And these are nice drawn images that there's a lot of big space. So like, I don't like doing detailed coloring. These are nice. Um, that it's easy to blend when there's big spaces, I feel like. So that was the C1. I'm gonna go in with the C3 and just kind of touch up on top of this mountain here. And then go back with the C1 and pull some of that color up. Eileen says it got cooler after the hurricane came through, but now it's getting humid again. Well, I hope you didn't get affected too much by that hurricane. It always worries me when I see that stuff on the news. And we had a bad, um, it wasn't a hurricane. I forget what it was out here a couple years ago. And that was pretty scary. All the trees getting knocked down. I can't imagine being without power for a long period of time, running water, things like that. So then for this mountain down below, I'm going to go a little darker and go um, C3 into this one. And then for the bottom of this layer, I'm going to go in with C5. And again, we'll go in and we'll blend some of that out. These tiny little spaces in the bridge here. All right, and then we're going to go back in with the C3 and just pull that color all up and blend it up. And 
real quick, easy coloring. Simple. Okay. So then for the um, bridge itself, I have this like barn. It's called Brown E08, which is like a, hi, Deborah. It's like a, um, a rusty brown, like a barnwood brown. And I'm just going to do my little bridge with this. We're going to go back in and darken that up in a second. And then I have a darker brown that I want to do. This is E57 that I just want to do for these little like wood pieces that are coming out from the bridge. And just a real light touch on them. And for the snow, we're going to use... C0, which is a real cool gray. I mean, you can barely see it, but I'm just going to go in and highlight like shadows and it's already drawn on the picture here. So under the trees, um, in front of this water. And again, most of this is going to be covered up anyway by um, our glitter. So we don't need a whole bunch. If you want more of a definition, you can go in with C1 and add a little more definition into those areas. Real simple coloring. All right, so we have our snow there and then I want this to look, the road to look a little muddy. So we have this YR24, which is called Pale Sepia. And I'm just going to lightly go in there and draw a couple lines. And don't worry, we're going to muddy that up. And I also want to do this, these little stones here. I have a warm gray. This is W5. I'm just going to do these little stones. All right, so then I'm going to go back in and do... C1 again and just kind of color in that bridge and spread out some of that muddy look. I'm sorry, not the bridge, the road. Just to soften that up a little bit. And I'm going to take C3 and this is a trick I learned from Kelly Latavola. Um, she, if you're not subscribed to her channel, she does very beautiful Copic colorings. She said, always have your grays in case you want to darken a color. So like this bridge, I don't have like a darker barn color there, but I'm just going to take C3, which is a gray, and it's going to darken up where I need it to darken up. So I don't have another shade of this, this brownish red, but by taking my cool gray, my C3 here, I can go right over that brown and darken that bridge without having the next shade up, if that makes sense. So invest in a nice set of grays so that you can do that. All right, so that's it for coloring. Pretty simple. Kelly Latavola, yes, Lavatola, yes. Here we go. So I, again, guys, I don't do a lot of coloring, but hi, D. Um, there we go. So the other thing I did, which I'm not going to do on this card was I took one of these little cars, this one, which is also blue night rubber stamps. This is called mini antique vehicles. And I stamped it out on the road here, but to me, like it just got lost in there because it's the same color as the road. I had stamped it in Brown. If you want to do that, you can, but I'm not going to do it on this card. We're just going to leave it the way that it is. 
So D, all we did was we stamped this out and we colored it in with some Copics, very simple coloring. This is the one I did yesterday and I colored in with color pencils. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to do the fun part, which is to make it a snow covered scene. Oh, I wanna take my gel pens quick. Where's my gel pen? And I'm just gonna put some snow back into our trees here. Really simple. And if you wanted to, you could go back in and add specks of snow. But like I said, we're going to color it up. We're going to cover it up with glitter. So you're probably not going to see all that anyway. All right. So now it's the fun part. I have cut down some double adhesive stick it. Okay. To the same size, same size as the card front. So it is five by three and three quarters to cover this. And I have some Martha Stewart glitter here. This is whatever it is, white glitter. Is there a name on this? Crystal fine glitter. I don't know. Any uh, glitter you have. I have um, Elizabeth Craft Designs glitter. I have, you just want it to be a super fine white glitter and coffee filter. And oops, first we want to put our double-sided and stick it adhesive on the top there. All right, and I have a little, whoops, sorry, bumped you guys there. Squeegee tool. Oh, it's okay, D. I just came on not too long ago. All right, so now that we have that on there, now we're going to bring in our handy dandy coffee filter, and we are going to cut off a little bit of excess we have here which is not excess. I just didn't line it up right because there's none in this side of the card, but that's not a big deal. We'll cut that down later. All right, as you pull away the release paper, you wanna try not to touch the image. And we're just going to dump glitter all over it. Now, I know some of you are moaning and groaning like, I hate glitter. I don't want to touch glitter. That's fine. You can do um, embossing powder. You can do it without the glitter. I just think the, the glitter gives it a nice little sparkle and sheen. All right. So I'm going to dump this all back in the jar. I feel like for Christmas cards, you kind of have to get out the glitter. The glitter and the foil have to come out. All right, now back onto the coffee filter. This is the release paper that came off of the stick it. I'm just gonna use that and push down onto the glitter just to kind of make sure that it's stuck into place there. We really want that stuck into the adhesive. Easy cleanup, and then you just want to grab your Swiffer and Swiffer that. And then we're just going to glue this in place. And 
here we go. We have a simple snowy covered bridge scene card. Which took a little bit of time. I mean, it took us 20 minutes to make it, but I don't think 20 minutes too bad for a colored card. So here's one done with colored pencils. And you can tell because you can see all my strokes there, even though I used Gamzel. And then here's the one with Copics, which I think came out a little bit better. What do you guys think? It does. It, it is missing the car, though. Now that I look at it, I kind of miss the car. Yeah, the glitter definitely softens the color. Like I said, your coloring doesn't have to be perfect because of that glitter. I know it's hard for you guys to see, but it really makes a difference when somebody gets this card. It really looks like you spent a lot of time coloring it and putting the glitter on it. And you're spending five bucks at the store to buy any kind of card that has glitter on it. And then I can just stamp my, you know, my holiday greetings in there, winter greetings, Christmas greetings, whatever you want to put on there. You know, like over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house we go. And then, like I said, if you're interested in the stamps, these are both blue, blue night rubber stamps. Um, the bridge is winter covered bridge. There you go. And then the little car. I don't know if this is discontinued or not because I got it on sale. There's the little cars and they have one car going in one direction. The other car goes in the other direction. So they're going in opposite directions. And then there's a little airplane and this is called mini antique vehicles. But that little car, you can see right here, it fits on there perfectly. I just wish I had colored it in a different color when I did it. So there we go, guys. That's all I have for today. Um, what else do you guys want to see? I need some ideas from you guys. You guys want to see some of the um, goodies from that I got from, um, what was it, Crafter's Companion? I can't show you the machine. That's not allowed until November 5th. But I can show you some of the goodies that were in the box. If you're interested, if not, that's fine. Something Christmas D says. Okay, D. So these are these are going to be presented on HSN. I don't know if they're available now or not. Let me do something about this glare here. Nope. I'm going to turn the light off. There we go. Um. So this is called the Winter Wonderland set. And this is um, from HSN, November 5th, Crafter's Companion. And again, these are silicone stamps. So when you get these stamps, make sure you prime them. And if you don't know the difference between silicone stamps and regular photopolymer stamps, I do have a video. Showing the difference. So the first thing is silicone stamps generally don't have a smell or an odor to them. Um, oh, oh, Tracy says she thinks they're available, but they might be sold out. So they're probably bringing more. You can also go on uh, Crafter's Companion website, which I'll link for you. So silicone stamps are... Um, they usually don't have a smell. They are usually a little harder to get off the backing. Um, and you want to prime them. So the way that you prime them, if you try to regularly stamp with these, what will happen is the ink will beat up. And so it won't stamp as crisp or clear because the ink has, um, it has beat it up as you can see there. So what I recommend if you're going to use silicone stamps, because there are some nice ones out there, is you prime your stamp. And the way that you're going to do that is, um, a couple of ways. Number one, you want to uh, make sure that the stamp is clean. Okay. It's, it, lighting is driving me nuts today. Okay. So once you have your stamp cleaned, you want to take an eraser and I like this mono sand eraser and you just lightly just kind of rub over the top of the stamp. What that's going to do is it's going to remove any kind of extra leftover production material on the stamp um, and prepare the stamp to accept ink. 
The other thing you're going to want to do is use Versamark ink, which is a clear sticky ink. This is going to fill in any pore surfaces of that stamp and make it more accepting of, of ink. So I've stamped that off. So this stamp is now primed. So when we go to stamp it again now, it will readily accept the ink a lot easier than when we first tried to use it. So here you can see the difference. And again, this is really just for silicone stamps. You don't have to do it for photopolymer stamps. So here it is unprimed and here it is primed. Big difference. So um, there are, you know, silicone stamps are a little bit lesser expensive to manufacture and they're a little bit cheaper usually when you buy them, but they're a little stretchier. They don't have a smell. They're different quality in photopolymer. So just remember when you get these stamps to prime them, don't get upset. Um, if they don't stamp as well the first couple times of using them. These stamps also generally work better with pigment inks. So um, the Distress Oxide inks are a great ink to use with silicone stamps because that, that pigment property sticks to the stamp a lot easier. But these are super cute. This is uh, Winter Wonderland snow season. And you can see there's some trees and some little stars and snowflakes, some cute sentiments. So I really like those. This is one of the blocks they sent me, and I like this block. I've been using it the last couple days because it has a beveled edge. So I don't know if you guys can see that. So when you're stamping, you hold the flat part. The beveled edge goes down so that you don't have to worry about, like, that extra being in the way when you're stamping. It it's just makes it a little easier, I think, to hold on to it. Let's see. Here is this nice traditional tree die, which has three dies. So there's a small, a medium, and a large tree die. I'm just going to pull stuff out of the box here and show it to you guys, as long as the box doesn't fall over. Look at this embossing folder. This is called Entwined Holly. And you know why I like this? It's large. It's five by seven. It is not a 3D embossing folder, but it's a large 5x7. So many embossing folders, I think, are short. So if you try to make a large um, card, they don't fit. So this is a nice 5x7 size embossing folder. If HSN brings out the 3D embossing folders, get them. I love them. They are beautiful. They sent these. Let me see if I can find them piece of cardstock here. Okay, here we go. So these are the Spectrum Noir Metallic Twin Tip Metallic Markers. And this one's called Rare Minerals. And I've been waiting to get my hands on these. And every time I went to order them, they were sold out. So you have a brush tip and a bullet tip. Nice colors. That one was like a darker green, jade green. This one's called green citrine, red garnet. They almost have like a silver metallic undertone, blue topaz. Amethyst. And pink quartz. And I'll do these on white paper too so you can see the difference. I don't, I don't do, um, I really have always been obsessed with like calligraphy and hand lettering, but I really don't do that good of a job with it. But I think if you're somebody who's into brush lettering, these would be really pretty to do not just holiday envelopes, but maybe like wedding envelopes or something, a special occasion. These colors are very bright and vibrant. These markers do not have any kind of odor to them. I give them a second to dry. That's what I was testing there. So here you can see them on dark paper. Very pretty, very metallic, like a pearlescent sheen to them. That's the best way to describe them. 
And then here are the different colors on white cardstock. There you can see the pearlescent sheen to them there. So pack of those markers. Very, very excited to see those. I'll have to work on my, my lettering. They sent these shimmering cards. And these are just regular A2 size cards. These are already pre-folded. There is just the cards in here, no envelopes. Ten of those. All right, this one I'm excited to show you guys. Hold on. Hold, please. Do, 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 do. Okay. I have so much stuff I want to show you guys about this new machine, and I'm sorry I can't can't show it to you yet. Can't show you the machine. All right, so here's a here's a die. This is a new um, edge die. Let's see if I can find the, here it is. Okay, so this is called Snow Flurry, and this is a regular edge die. So when you are cutting this die out, This is what it will look like. So this would be, you would imagine this is on your cardstock there, and this is what it would look like. Okay, so very beautiful die. Okay, and what I did with it, of course, playing with the new machine that will be launched November 6th, um, was did this with it. Can you guys see that? And then this one is in blue. It's a little harder to see because the blue is not as strong as the gold. But So yes, they are foiled and embossed with your dyes. So that is this, this Snow Flurry one. So you can use it as a regular die or you can use the new machine to foil it. Um, also, I did that with this tree one. This one's called Contemporary Tree, and you can see it's a large um, tree. This is this is very large. I mean, this is this is something you'd want to put on a five by seven card. So yeah, here's here's that folder, which is a five by seven folder, and look at how this card just barely snuggles into there. So this is definitely an image you want to use on five by seven. But again, if you cut the tree out, here it is, die cut out. So very beautiful, very intricate, and I use their metallic shimmer paper, pearlescent paper on this. Um, but if you use the new machine that is coming out November 6th, this is what it looks like with gold foil, again, on that shimmer paper. So it's not cut out. This is what happens when you heat it too long. So there is a technique to using it. So this is not heating it too long. And then here it is with the green foil. And the green foil I had in my stash. The machine came with silver and gold foil. So this green foil, it's not picking up the light. But this is, come on, can you see that green foil? It's so hard, it's not coming out. But it is a really pretty green foil. But the gold is just stunning. Doesn't that look elegant? Who would think that you made this? They would think you spent $10. Tanya, it's a brand new machine coming out from Crafter's Companion that's going to work with your Gemini Junior, Gemini or Gemini Junior. So um, Crafter's Companion sent me these items to try out. And I did do an unboxing video, but you guys blew it up. And so they had me take the video down. Um, until closer to launch, which I believe is November 6th on HSN. 
Um, yes, D, I am going to show all kinds of videos with this new machine because I got to tell you, I am super excited about it. I've been playing with it. And even if they hadn't sent it to me, I definitely would have bought it. I have a similar machine by another uh, very famous crafter that's on HSN. And I can tell you this machine is a lot easier to use, in my opinion, more user friendly. But I will definitely be showing that. So these are some other items to sh that came with, again, for that machine. So, all right, you'll have to forgive me here because I think some of these came with my Gemini Junior and I just threw them in the box. I think this came with my Gemini Junior. Okay, so these gray dies. What these are called are... Um, Stamp and cut dies. So what they will do is they will give that foil impression and also cut out. And you'll remember that because they're dark gray. So um, they go with the new machine. Hint, hint. So I just want to show you these are the ones they sent me. So there's a square frame with a little corner. There's this um, heart in a corner. And then this oval shaped frame just to show you what it looks like. So here it is. So the machine will give you that foiling and that embossed letterpress look. And then when you run it through the Gemini Junior, it cuts it out perfectly. So that's that goes with that. And then the butterfly one, where'd that one go? So these guys do not cut out. These guys just make the impression, but they do not cut out. They are silver in color. Um, I thought I had a large butterfly one. I'll find it, but just to show you what they look like. Oh, maybe it was one of those. Here's what they look like. So these foil and cut out. Like, aren't they beautiful? How much money do we spend buying die cuts like this? And now I can make whatever color I want as long as I have that color foil. And it is not regular foil. It's completely different from a mink machine. Do not think it's the same as a mink machine. You can use the foil in a mink machine. It's a completely different system. Um, okay, this is a nice Merry Christmas die, which comes with the actual Merry Christmas script and with the shadow. This is called Seasonal Sprigs. This is going to make some really cool, um, what do you call it, wreaths. So you have a larger sprig, a thinner sprig, some berries, some leaves. Very pretty. I really like this one. I can't wait to do this one. This one's called Sparkling Snowflake, and it is a very large snowflake. But I can just see cutting several of these out out of different color glitter paper and shimmer paper and pearl paper and stacking them. Almost like a flower, stacking them that way. I think that one's going to be really cool. Um, this is their different textures. And if you have the Gemini or the Gemini Junior, you, you may have purchased this. Um, but this is their different textures. So you have like a blue jean material. You have what feels like, like a chalkboard material two of those. This is a very fine, um, like a wood, almost like a bamboo, very, very fine bamboo paper. Then we have this kind of dark colored burlap and cork. And these are all adhesive on the backside. So when you are done die cutting, whatever you want to cut out of it, um, it has the adhesive so it will stick I think the only one that doesn't is the blue jean. I think that's adhesive. It feels like adhesive to me. Maybe it's not adhesive. It feels like it's adhesive backed. Hold on. I don't want to tell you guys the wrong information here. Maybe it's just a backer board. It is adhesive. So I was right. So... Those have, these are, I think, like I said, this is available. If you, if you have the Gemini Junior, you can order this and cut out whatever you want to cut out for that. But there's more. There's some more of this shimmering card stock. This one's called Silver Starlight. This is a 20 pack of six by six 
printed cardstock. So imagine cutting a snowflake out with that. It's going to be gorgeous. Here's some tags they sent, which match that. They sent large paper to match that. This I'm excited to try out, the Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White Cardstock. This is going to be great for doing Copic coloring. I've never tried their paper, so I can't wait to try that out. Um, they sent these little, what do you call these? Pearls, <laughs> adhesive pearls. So let's see what these look like. I love Sarah Davies too. And I love that she always wears purple when she comes on. And I'm like, ooh, she sh they should do a clothing line that they're going to sell her clothing. Because I love the clothes that she wears. So these come in this cute little box. And it looks like it's just one pack. But there's many different sizes. And yes, they are self-adhesive. So we have the small, the medium, and the large. So plenty to go around there to go on our beautiful cards can never run out of bling pearls diamonds all of those accessories these were really neat these are tiny little um 30 piece matte cardstock this one's in blues and it has a sample of what each color is but these are perfect for die cutting i think the size of them and when you want to do like little banners on your cards so this one has like a medium like a a sky blue an ice blue. So I was really, that was really neat to see that one. This one is pearl cardstock and this is all in one color. So look at these winter colors. This is a very pearlescent, almost a teal color. So there you go. Perfect again for die cutting, for using on the new machine. And then this one, look how pretty this one is. This one's called Luxury Cardstock, and this one's in silver. And this one has the Glitter Cardstock and also the Mirror Cardstock. So really like, what a neat sampler pack. And then I don't have to cut the paper down. It's already there for me just to pull out and die cut it. And then the last thing I think, let me just check the other box here. Make sure I'm not missing anything else. I am missing one of the die sets, but I don't have it in front of me. Oh, it's right. I do have it right in front of me. Literally, it was right in front of me. Hold on. Let me clean some of this off of here. Okay, so this pack of paper, I can already tell you I'm seeing shimmer. I think this is metallic paper. Hold on. And I bought, when I got the Gemini Junior, I bought the packs of the foiled paper and the metallic paper because it's it's so gorgeous. Like you'll never run out of that stuff. All right, I can see already this red paper is pearlescent. It's so pretty. If that doesn't say Christmas red, oh, my corners got bent up. And this is a good heavyweight paper. This is like card based paper. You, This is gorgeous. So we have red. I don't know if they're going to be selling this as a pack. Wow, that's like a bright lime green. And it's all pearlized metallic paper. I didn't realize this before today. I thought it was just regular cardstock. This one is a darker, like a forest green. And again, it's pearlized paper, all good quality, heavy card stock. Grinch Green D says, I agree. It's, it's a very hunter green. This one is like a light pink. For those of you that do non-traditional colors, this is like a teal. This is very pretty. Almost like a jade color. Leah's middle name is Jade. Um, this is a beautiful chocolate brown. And it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five of each color in here. And again, I don't know if they're going to be selling this as a pack or 
if this was just part of my promotional box for me to cut out all kinds of stuff with it. This is like a big bird yellow. It's like a regular sunshine yellow. And then this other yellow is a more muted pale yellow, like a pastel yellow. So very beautiful colors, very heavy duty, wonderful pearlized cardstock there. And these are the last two things. So here's that butterfly I was showing you guys before. Has a little swirl. So this is a uh, foil press. It's a cut and emboss die is what it is. So you have regular die cuts and you have this cut and press dies. And I will tell you, yes, that machine works with other companies that make those kinds of dies. And then here's another stamp set. This was called Photopolymer Stamp Set Peace and Joy. Let's see if it is photopolymer. And this is photopolymer. So those of you that don't like silicone stamps, these are photopolymer stamps. Look at how cute these little ornaments are. You have snowflakes. I wonder if this has a die set. I'm going to have to see if there's a die set that goes with this. That would be cute. Snowflake, some cute sentiments. Oh, come, let us adore him. Have a joyous holiday, peace and joy. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And they're all different shapes, circle, pear-shaped of ornaments that they're really easy to cut out if you don't have a die set. But I wonder if there is a matching die set. And this is photopolymer, so you do not need to do anything to prep these. So those are the goodies that were in the box other than the machine itself, which is literally sitting right there, you guys, like two feet from me, not even. And I, I'm dying that I can't show you all of the stuff that I've been doing with this machine and playing with it. But they asked me not to until November 5th. So I will have videos on what the machine is, what it can do, how it compares to the mink, how it compares to other similar foiling companies out there. I will tell you this one is far superior. I saw the new one that just came out by, oh, what's that big dye company? Um, Spellbinders. And just, I don't have the Spellbinders one. I have the other one by another person who's on HSN selling her crafty things. And I compared it to that machine. Um, I got it last year during HSN sale, and I can tell you that this new machine from Gemini Jr. is far superior than that other one, um, especially if you have a Gemini. It's designed to work with your Gemini, Gemini Jr., so that's all I have to say about that. So there we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video on the snowy covered bridge card. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me. Um, I just showed the box D. I did an unboxing um, of it. Um, I guess I could show the the box. Hold on. I'm gonna show you guys the box. Maybe I shouldn't show you the box. I might get in trouble for showing you the box. They might make me take the video down again. I'm not gonna show you the box. It's only two weeks away, D. Just save up. Save up, D. All right. So here we go, guys. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, you can scroll up and give it a thumbs up. That helps to share the video with other crafters. If you're not subscribed, I will put a little button in one of these corners um, to give you a thumbs to give me or sorry to subscribe so you guys know when I'm posting videos and any comments, of course, post them below. I love answering your questions. And for those of you that requested the Halloween cards, those all went out in the mail. So you should be getting them. I have a couple left if anybody didn't request one. These are the ones that I have left. So if you didn't request one, I'll be happy to send you one of these. So I have four left. If you did not request a Halloween card and you want one, it's not too late. I'll put one of these in the mail for you guys. But thanks for watching. D, I'm working on that next. That's where these bad boys are coming in. <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. And as always, keep on stamping. Have a good day. Bye-bye.